In this video, I'll be exploring the importance of Voronoi. So we'll start with some examples, then jump into Grasshopper, and at the end, I explain the process uh, by showing you a sketch. All right, this part, I wanted to show a bit of an example of how Voronoi is used in nature. Uh, as you can see here, we have the different cells, how they're divided. If we were to put a point here, we can see that the process still stands. So it's a process that you will find in nature. Um, we can also see that here with the wings of a dragonfly and how it subdivides it very efficiently towards the edges where it needs to be lighter and thinner. And here it's a little bit more structural and thicker. So a lot of things that we can take away from uh, understanding Voronoi and the process, although it is overused and misused a lot of the time, it is uh, it is good not to just toss it aside because it's overused. It's really good to understand how uh, kind of functions, right? How it functions in nature and how we can use it to our advantage uh, for various things. Uh, also, bubbles, right? When we look at bubbles and how they're divided and how they kind of come together, that is using the Voronoi pattern in three dimensions, and this is kind of showing that same thing. So all I've done here is uh, I've created a surface and with this surface I'm going to subdivide it using vector, populate geometry, and you'll see this is why a lot of people use it. It's really easy to create these points but also because Voronoi looks, uh, it's not like just a typical grid, it looks uh, a little bit better if we plug that straight into, oh, not the radius but into the points. You'll see that we already have something to work with and if we change let's say the seed we can just get more random points this way the other reason is because if we were to just say uh, bring in surface frames and just create frames here let's disable the preview this stuff if we were to just create frames, let's give it a larger number and also create some points here. This is a quick way to just get some points on a surface using surface frames and then plugging in a point component into the frames. Now, as you can see, if we were to plug this, these points into Voronoi here, flatten the input, you can see that we don't have anything exciting. There's nothing out of the ordinary that looks cool. And this is why combining it with something like this can really um, increase the how fun or just a little bit more of the dynamic of the pattern. So. Let's change the count to 15. And you'll see that it'll start just throwing random points in there. This is another cool way that Voronoi can be used. Um, and the reason why it's not typically used with normal grids like this, because it doesn't give you a result that is um, as desirable as something like a Voronoi random points. All right, so in this part, I wanted to explain what Voronoi is. Uh, because I do think that it gets a bad rap, um, and I think I know why. Uh, so let's first start by showing you what Voronoi is, um, and it's simply a process of subdividing uh, a set of points. Uh, so let's say we have two sets of points, or just two points. What Voronoi does is it will calculate, or it will just connect for the process, we connect this with a line. Now, halfway between this one and this one, say somewhere here. These are equal. At this point, there is a perpendicular created 
this way and this way. So there is a 90 degree intersection here. And that's what it does. So the process is connects the points, creates 90 degrees. But since we only have two points, it would only subdivide this entire, if this is the frame, it subdivides it into two. If we wanted to add more points, that's where it starts getting interesting. So we have these two points. And I'll delete this. And let's start with, let's create just two more points, just randomly. So one here and one here. So what we're going to do is connect them using this purple line. The closest points. Then where these two intersect, we do 90 degrees. So where these two in the midpoint, where they intersect, we do 90 degrees. Same thing here, same thing here, same thing here. Now, once we extend those, that's where we start getting the pattern. So if we extend this one, we extend this one, we extend this one, we extend this one, we extend this one. And between these two, we have this one. If we had another point, then there would be a perpendicular here connecting these two. So let's add another point here. Creating this. Then where they intersect at 90 degrees. And this is why you'll see now that this becomes the Voronoi cell. And this is the Delaunay, I forget the name exactly. Uh, but that's the process of using Voronoi. So whenever you have a bunch of random points, it subdivides it. And the reason why it gets a bad rap is because it's a really simple way of subdividing stuff. So a lot of people tend to use it. Um, and also you can create random points on any, on any surface fairly quickly. So a lot of people use it because you can take, let's say a surface that looks like this. You can apply random points on it. It doesn't have to be rectangular, it's just random points. And when you create the random points, you can start seeing that we can do that here too. Well, we have these triangles that get connected. And those become the midpoint of where the cell goes. So hopefully that was useful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to subscribe. I do have um, other stuff in my website if you guys would want to check that out. But other than that, thank you very much for being here and I hope to see you next time.